You are listening to Dot W Talk Radio for the underground church in the West. It's all going on, Pastor Tim. You have discipled me in the art of snacking. Talk about something really important because this Sunday. Did I leave the lights on again? My car outside? <laughs> yeah, your car will be dead by this end. Yeah. The Christian must live, or the next event on the calendar is the return of Christ. Listening to Dot W Talk Radio. I'm Pastor Tim, and I'm here with Pastor Foley. We are back. Yes. Not that we've been away, but we just haven't done a podcast in a while. So it's good to be back with you. We have much to cast our pods about, I guess. <laughs> a big thanks to Dr. Ng. She uh, was our podcast guest for the last three weeks. Better than we are. <laughs> right. More regular. That's right. I wanted to ask you a few questions, Pastor Foley, specifically about North Korea Mm. and about your blogs the last month. Um, Back at the end of February, you wrote about the three North Korean missionaries, Mm. well, who have been detained. Uh, We say three if you go back to Kenneth Bay. Right. It's over a period of of several months now, Kenneth Bay, and then um, on the heels of that, uh, Kim Jong-uk, who is a South Korean missionary. Kenneth Bay is a Korean-American. Kim Jong-uk is a South Korean missionary. Um, and then the third one, John Short, who, um, who has been released, right. you know, Australian missionary. Yeah. So I guess my question very simply is how should Western Christians react to this kind of news? Mm. Well, um, one of the questions that people have asked me, Pastor Tim, about it, they said, does this represent a war on Christians? And my response is, well, that, that, that war has actually been going on now for more than 60 years. In other words, uh, we are uh, more familiar now, uh, recently, with these three detainments, but this is nothing new in North Korea. About a third of the North Korean church is in concentration camps. Of the 100,000 underground believers, about 30,000 are in prison. And so one of the things about Soyuz A and our approach is is that um, we are not Western missionaries attempting to evangelize and disciple North Korea, but our job is to support the underground North Korean church and North Koreans, wherever North Koreans are found, to reach their country for Christ. And so every servant of God is, is his servant. They stand and fall on their own. So we wouldn't speak in judgment of any of those people. But in regard to um, when people say to us, how, how best to do this work, our response is always the same. We believe that God has a special calling on North Koreans to be able to reach their own country for Christ. We find that missionaries can learn a lot by uh, listening to, interacting with North Koreans about how to reach their own country. And so rather than people um, feeling that the best way to reach North Korea for Christ is through some of these direct methods where Western missionaries or Korean missionaries are going to North Korea directly. Uh, so USA was founded on the principle about 13 years ago that no one was listening to North Koreans and that they really held the key to reaching their country for Christ. We still believe that today. So what if someone right now was listening to our podcast and they had the vision of going to North Korea say as an English teacher, mm-hmm. to share the gospel. And that's not too far-fetched. We get calls Correct. like we that. But what would you say to that? Yeah. Well, I would say that, um, you know, again, first of all, uh, we always encourage people to, to pray uh, to see what it is that the Lord is calling them to do. That, we believe, still occurs against the backdrop of learning how the church has conducted this mission so far. And that's one of the things that we notice is that we talk to people and say, hey, I really feel called to be an English teacher in North Korea. We say, great, do you have much of a background in how the church has has done North Korean missions? They say, well, uh, not particularly, but I'm just thinking if I can go and make a witness for Christ. Well, we wanna emphasize that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fond of saying, Pastor Tim, as you know, God was here before we came, God is here now that we're here, and God will be here after we leave. And so I think it's very important if people have that kind of a sense that God is calling them to be directly involved. Spend some time, learn the history, interact with North Korean Christians, and, uh, and find out what has happened and what is happening before you proceed. God has a church in North Korea. And that church is a, a tough and battle-hardened church, and it is a joyful church. It's a church that continues to advance the gospel in these conditions. And so we believe that that church really is... Uh, 
almost you'd call it the church of record, and that just as, as if I were going into another country to, to do evangelism work there, I'd want to connect with the, the Christians and those people who knew about that country as well. So that's certainly what I'd encourage people to do. And that's an important point because we aren't the saviors of the North Korean underground yeah. church. Seoul USA isn't no Western Christian. Is yeah, I've never heard the North Korean underground church say, please send people, We're, our hands are tied here, we can't do anything. One of the things I think it's also important to note, and this is what I pointed out in the blog, is that I, you know, I, 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 at this point, I think it's best to refrain from analysis or consideration of their, their strategies and what they chose to do and how they did it and so forth. I would simply say that I think that their imprisonment points to the fact that there is no backdoor into North Korea when it comes to sharing the gospel, that always a price is going to be paid by the person who brings the gospel. It doesn't matter if you're uh, Australian, South Korean, American, or North Korean, you're going to pay a price to bring the gospel to North Korea. Now, with that being said, we actually had the wonderful privilege of being together in South Korea for the opening of Underground University. I'm curious, do we ever have any Underground University North Korean defector students who go back into North Korea? We do. You know, the university has been operating now for, uh, I think this is, Mrs. Wally and I were trying to remember for sure, but this is, I think, the sixth year of Underground University. And so um, during that time, uh, we've had a number of students who actually uh, do ministry there. We don't talk about their uh, the ministry that they do publicly because of the danger for them. I mean, there's no such thing as showing up back in North Korea and saying, well, everybody, I'm back, you know, <laughs> because that's illegal. Once mm. you've defected, if you return, unless you throw yourself on the mercy of the state, which, you know, 100 people have done in the last year, then um, you're not going to be able to, to go openly into North Korea. But we do have students who do that. Now, you, you on the whole, Underground University, is to help train them wherever North Koreans are found. And one of the things that we want to clarify for folks is that the, the only place to do North Korean ministry, the, it's it's not just inside North Korea, but North Korea has several hundred thousand workers that they send abroad to Russia, to China, to Mongolia, all across Southeast Asia, even into the Middle East. And we're able to reach and minister to those North Koreans, not directly as Westerners, but through the UU students that we train. It seems like a short podcast, but I'm going to close this up there, Pastor Foley. I have some other questions I want to ask mm -hmm. you, but I'm going to save it, I think, um, maybe for two weeks from now. Keep everyone hanging a little bit. Then we'll reconvene then. Sounds good. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. You've been listening to Dot W Talk Radio, where we reflect together on how to hear and how to do the Word of God. If you'd like to submit your question to Pastor Foley and Pastor Tim, you can go ahead and email us. Submit your question to feedback at dotheword.org. For more information on the Dot W Discipleship Groups, visit dotheword.org. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll look forward to joining you again next week. Hear the word. Do the word. Dot W.